Hi there, welcome back to a new video. Today is a very, very special video. I am doing a 10,000 subscriber Q&A video. Now the channel actually passed 10,000 several weeks ago now. I'm a bit late in making this video, but I didn't want to miss it. I want to make this video. I want to answer some questions that I got. Let's jump right into it. Now I'm going to start the video by answering some questions related to books, Kindles, things like that. And then later in the video, I'll transition more into YouTube-based questions and other unrelated questions to reading. Let me start with the first question over here. I had a couple of questions actually asking me if I read fiction books and to give my fiction recommendations. And to be truthful here, I don't really read fiction books right now. I used to read fiction quite a bit, back in high school and I really did enjoy it. I actually read some manga like Full Metal Alchemist and Lemony Snicket series. I was really a big fan of that. Those are the only two series I would say that I read very consistently. But after I finished high school, I really did not continue reading at all. It wasn't until recently where I fell back in love with reading and that was because of nonfiction books. I do actually prefer reading biographies, which are kind of like fiction, but like real stories. And the reason why I like biographies is because they're usually story based about a person and the story of their life and I think that is as close as I'll get to fiction for right now. I do see myself dabbling with fiction books in the future but for right now I am really loving my non-fiction books. If anyone out there has some strong recommendations for fiction books please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear them. I think reading fiction is a great way to live a more present life while reading books. I remember when I read fiction books I would really get sucked into them and I couldn't put them down. Now that I'm talking about it, I kind of want to find a new fiction book to read. So please leave recommendations down below. This next question is asking if I can do a bookshelf tour. Now, as a Kindle person, it's really hard to do a bookshelf tour. All my books are on Kindle. The best place to check out my books is on Goodreads. Link for that down below. All my books are on there. The books I've read, the books I'm currently reading, and the books I want to read, they're all nicely stored on Goodreads. But one thing that I currently struggle with is buying physical books. When I find a book I really enjoy, I tend to buy it on Kindle, then buy the paperback version later on and add it to my physical bookshelf. Does anyone else struggle with this? I kind of wish there was a good solution to this where I can have both formats without buying the book twice. But hey, it's something that I have to deal with right now. There's something about only the actual book that just feels so nice, buying the book and getting it in the mail or going to the bookstore. I just love that feeling. Also, one more thing I want to mention, I'll be making a video at the end of this month talking about the favorite books I've read from 2021. Stay look out for that. I think that will also be a great way for you to glimpse of the books I currently read. Now moving on over here, I got a bunch of questions asking about the future of the Kindle Oasis. When is the new Kindle Oasis coming out? What will it have? What features I'm looking forward to? Let me spend a minute talking about the Kindle Oasis. Now I am a Kindle Oasis fan. I love that device. It was my first Kindle and I read on that thing every day for basically a year and it changed my life. It it wasn't until just last month where I got the Kindle Paperwhite where I stopped using my Kindle Oasis. And I am looking forward to a new Kindle Oasis coming out. In terms of when it comes out, it really only comes out in two possible places, right before a prime day or right before the holidays. So the next possible time it might come out is the middle of next year or maybe late spring. We'll have to see if that actually happens or not. But I don't even know if they're going to call it the Kindle Oasis anymore. I really feel the future of the Oasis will be some sort of note taking features. Now whether Amazon chooses to make it the Kindle Oasis 2 or just make a brand new Kindle entirely and brand it something else, we'll have have to see. The Kindle Voyage used to be the top tier Kindle and they stopped making those. There's a good chance the Oasis will follow that line as well. But we'll have to see. I really do think Amazon is due to make a note taking device that also has reading functionality. I think that is the future of the Oasis. I have a question here asking if I'll ever review a Books product or an Onyx Books product and I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. This is a brand that makes e-readers with Android installed on it so you can download every app that you could possibly think of. It's basically an e-reader that can support Kindle books as well as Kobo books or Nook books. You just download the version of the app that you want from the Google Play Store and you have all your books on one device. Now I do actually have the Nova 3 Color and I was intending to make a review on it. I actually still might do that but I've been putting it off because I just don't like using the device. It's just so annoying to use compared to a Kindle or a Kobo. It just doesn't 
doesn't feel like an e-reader. And the reason why is because the resolution on that device just isn't high quality. Using it is a bit sluggish sometimes. It just doesn't feel like a nice e-reader to have. And I think the Books lineup is really meant more for note takers. They have some high-end devices that are great for note taking. And having Android on your device may be a really good perk if you take notes on your e-reader. But for just reading purposes, I think Kindle and Kobo do it so much better. I'll be making a video about it in the future. Having a color e-ink display, I have to say, is very interesting as well. There's some nice parts of it, but there are also some terrible parts of it. The ghosting is just terrible on those devices. But again, I'll save my thoughts for the full review video if I ever get around to making it, hopefully in the next month or so. Now this next question is very interesting. What is your favorite romance book or movie? For me, I don't really read romantic books, but I do watch some romance movies and I have a few options here to choose from. If Up is an option, I would probably choose that, the animated Pixar film. That movie gets me every single time. But putting that one aside, some actual romance films, I think The Big Sick is a great movie that I really, really enjoyed, and also Crazy Rich Asians. Those are my two top romance films, I have to say. This next question is actually a few different questions in one. The first question here is blue your favorite color? Yes, blue is my favorite color. It's just kind of weird that I'm not wearing blue. Usually I wear a blue turban in my videos. So yes, blue is my favorite color. The next question is after that, do you read more on your Kindle versus books? Absolutely, yes. When I first got my Kindle, I was reading a book every single week and I was not doing that before without my Kindle. Having a Kindle really does change your life. It just makes you able to read so much more in a much more effective and productive way. The note taking is also a big part of that as well. And the next question after that, do you find that reading on your Kindle leads to you reading more versus reading a book? I think I just answered that. So yes, reading on my Kindle, I find myself reading a lot more often just because it's so so much more convenient. I have all my books with me on one device. I can easily hop between different devices. It's also so much easier to carry when I travel. So when I go different places, I can always have my books with me. Next question here is a loaded question. What is the best book I've ever read? And this is very hard to answer. If you're a reader out there, I think you'd probably struggle with this as well. It's really hard just to pick one book that has changed my life. Now I do have a video with five books that changed my life, link for that right now on the screen. But putting that aside, I think if I had to pick just one or two, the first one I would choose is I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. This book taught me so much about personal finance. It really did change my life. But putting that aside, it really got me into the world of reading nonfiction books. That was my entry into reading again as an adult. I couldn't be more grateful for finding that book. If it wasn't for that book, I would not have been reading right now. So that book for that reason is probably my number one choice. Putting that one aside, the next one I would choose is Boundaries. That's a great book as well. It taught me a lot about myself as a person and how to respect myself and my values. So those two books are probably my top ones, but there are so many books out there that I can't even think about right now that are probably just as good. This next question is actually very, very wholesome and I really appreciate the question. The question is, how do you keep your positive energy so much? You always look so happy to be here. It's refreshing. Thank you for the very kind words. I honestly don't have a very clear cut answer to this. I would find myself to be a very optimistic person. I tend to be a very positive person outside of YouTube. So that could be part of it. But honestly, when it comes to YouTube, especially, it is really hard to stay positive. Making a video every single week, I make usually two videos every single week. It is not easy. It gets to your head sometimes, especially some of the comments that we get as YouTubers aren't always the nicest things in the world. So staying positive is not always the easiest thing to do. But I always remind myself, that staying positive is usually an easier thing to do than dwelling on the negativity. It takes out a lot more energy from you when you're thinking of negative thoughts and having positive thoughts actually gives you energy. So what I try to do with my YouTube work especially is always remind myself of the why. Why am I doing this? Why am I pushing so hard to work on this? And that usually helps bring a wave of motivation and positivity to me. But the other thing, especially when it comes to YouTube and Kindles, in real life, I don't really have many friends who read on Kindles. I don't really talk about reading in Kindles and e-readers with anyone in real life. It comes up as a joke because people know I make YouTube videos about this topic, but not many people I know actually read books. So when I get to make videos about this topic, something I'm actually 
very passionate about. It just makes me so happy that there are community people out there on the internet who find these videos interesting. I get to talk about it and get so excited. That's probably a big reason why I stay positive. Now this next question I find really interesting and I actually really appreciate someone asked this. Is your hair long or short? So underneath my turban, I do have quite a bit of hair. I don't cut my hair. As a sick, we are not meant to cut our hair. We keep our hair uncut as part of our look, our identity. We are meant to keep our hair in its natural form. And as my hair grows, it does get pretty long. It goes down to my, my back, halfway down my back, I would say. I used to have much longer hair, but as you get older, your hair will change. I have friends who have hair that go down to their legs. So it really depends on your genes. But yes, as a sick, we don't cut our hair. If you wanna learn more about Sikhi in that religion, links down below at the bottom of every video I publish. I have a few links that direct people to the basics of Sikhi YouTube channel. That does a much better job of explaining what Sikhi is and why we look the way we look. Check those videos out if you're interested in that. Now this person actually also had one more question over here. What books do you recommend for self growth? And I have to say there are so many self growth books out there, but there are a few that come to mind when I read this question. The first one being The Compound Effect. That book does a really good job of summarizing a lot of my core values as a creator. Also another book that's really, really good is Atomic Habits. I'll be reading that book again actually at the beginning of next year. I'll be talking more about that in a future video. Then also a couple other books I'd recommend, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and How to Win Friends and Influence People. These are all classic books in the personal growth section. I really recommend them. It's a great place to start. This next question really, really made me think. If you weren't a Kindle YouTuber, what other videos would you make? And for me, I actually wasn't always a Kindle YouTuber, so I had to go back and kind of re think my process of how I got here. I started on YouTube with making sick tech videos about Sikhi and technology that slowly moved into regular technology videos. I also made travel vlogs. And on top of that, I ended up making productivity videos and I slowly made my way to reading and Kindles. It took me over a year and a half to get to this point of posting every single week. And then also I was on YouTube for several years just posting videos randomly. So it wasn't an overnight process to get here. Honestly though, if I had to choose again, start over from scratch, I would probably choose a completely different interest of mine, which is personal finance. I think I would love to make content about that topic if I was starting from scratch right now, especially in today's world with Web3 becoming a very big thing, cryptocurrency. I would love to really dive deep into that and make educational content on that topic. Who knows, maybe I'll find a way to do it right now. I really wanna learn more about it. But it's really about picking something that you're passionate about. For me, personal finance is a big thing I'm really interested in. So I would really enjoy making videos about that topic. Pick something you're interested in and really just make content about it. No matter how advanced you are or how beginner you are, just start somewhere and learn in public. All right, this next question is asking, what do you do when you're not working or reading? For me, it's usually hanging out with my wife every weekend since we got married a few months ago. We've been really busy doing random stuff and I'm really enjoying that honestly. It makes me have a force full of way to unplug from work and just reset and enjoy life. That is something I'm very grateful for. Putting that aside though, I am looking forward to doing other things like traveling more and also picking up some new habits into the next year. Things like learning how to code maybe or cooking or fitness and health. I have a lot of interests that I want to take more seriously in the new year. So hopefully these will be new habits I pick up moving forward. Next question is asking, how does it feel to have 10,000 subscribers? And honestly, it doesn't feel much different than before. I thought maybe one day having 10K subs would be a really big deal. And I used to set really big goals for myself in terms of subscriber counts, but I quickly learned that is not the right way of doing it. And the reason being is I have no control over who subscribes to my YouTube channel. Instead, what I'm focusing on now is setting goals within my control. So my goal for this year was to post two videos every single week, ending the year with 100 new videos on my YouTube channel. And right now I'm on track to do that. And those are things I find to be much more fulfilling to me because I actually control that. Having number of subscribers as a goal makes it very hard because once you reach the number, you just create a new goal for yourself. It's very short lived. With the work aspect, the process based goals, I find myself feeling much more fulfilled because there's not really an end date to it. You just keep going and you set yourself up for success. The other numbers like subscribers and views 
because those things will naturally come if you put in the work and you put your attention toward things you actually control. Don't get me wrong though, it does feel really nice and reassuring to know that 10,000 people chose to subscribe to this channel. It makes me feel like I'm doing something right. I am incredibly grateful for this point right now and I'm only hoping for more moving forward. I just feel so inspired to keep doing more of what I'm doing and make more videos that help people read more books. Next up, I have this question over here that I really dislike because I get asked it quite often. I never know what to say. What are your plans for the long term, the next five years? I know there are people out there that really enjoy making five year plans. I am not that person. I always struggled with this, but if I had to answer that right now, I would really hope five years from now, I would be quitting my day job and I'd have a sustainable, self-employed business on YouTube making content as my full-time job. That would be the dream, hopefully less than five years to get to that point, but I'm really working towards that. So that is my only priority right now is to get to that point. Maybe things will be completely different five years. Five years is a long time. I really can't even imagine what that will be. I am just trying to focus on the months ahead right now. Next up, someone is asking, how long does it take to script a video? Scripting is actually the hardest part of the production process for me. I find myself, if I actually spend the time writing a good script, the video usually does very well. But writing a script does take time, especially for product reviews. I really have to research a lot, find the numbers, get all the metrics, and compile it into an easy to understand format into a video script. It does take quite a long time. I don't really have any answers. Some will just take a few minutes. Like right now, I'm answering these questions off the cuff, so there really wasn't much of a script that went into this. But for product reviews, I could sometimes spend several hours maybe an entire day just testing things out and drafting a script. It just takes time depending on the video. Now my last question over here is I want to start a tech YouTube channel but don't know how to start. And my advice to this is just start. I really wish I didn't wait so long to start my YouTube channel. The hardest part is just starting. Don't even worry about making a tech YouTube channel. Just start by making a YouTube channel. One piece of advice I'd give my prior self is just create videos about any single topic you'd want. It could be different week to week. Just make a video every single week and don't stop. Once you get in the habit of creating something weekly, everything else has fixed itself on its own. I found my niche of Kindles over a year later of making videos every single week, but that wouldn't have happened if I just sat down and waited and waited, trying to think of what videos to make. You gotta start somewhere. Don't worry about the quality of it. Just post videos. No matter where you start, your first videos will always be something you cringe and look at, but you gotta do it. You gotta get through those first 50 to 100 videos. It makes a big difference. That's all I got for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna ask any other question, I'm always available to chat. You can email me with a link down below in the description, or you can leave a comment down below or hit me up on Twitter. Also check out my previous Q&A videos, link for that playlist on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.